Hello, 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 and welcome to Mike Cobb's Offshore Investment Report. Great, great program today. As you know, I promised you that we're going to cover the 15 key questions for offshore investment from this book, Mike Cobb's Consumer Resource Guide, or as I call it, the Offshore Everything book. We covered one through four. Today's number numbers five and six. Mike, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good, Carter. Nice to be with you. Uh, I'm here in Las Vegas at the Mirage Hotel, and sadly, the internet in my room is so bad uh, that that uh, I can't do it. So I'm down here in the very empty uh, convention hall. I guess the Freedom Fest is actually starting today. It's a huge Good. event. Uh, I got the numbers. I saw Mark Skousen yesterday, and he said there's 2,200 people registered for this event, which Makes sense. I mean, people care about freedom, and and this is an incredible event. I, I'm, this might be his twenty fifth, sixth, seventh year. I don't know. I remember I was at his very first one. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think when that was. That was two thousand. So maybe this is his twenty second one. Anyway, anyway, he's been doing this a long time. He's had incredible people here. Ron Paul, P.J. O'Rourke, uh, Ben Stein has been here many times, and then you know just 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 a ton of folks. But what's really exciting, and I think you'll appreciate this, and I'm sure many of the folks watching this will also appreciate it. Uh, Fox Nation is doing a live streaming for some of these events. Uh, and I was invited uh, uh, by the woman who's hosting a lot of those. Uh, in fact, you might know her name, Heather uh, Wagonhall. Do you know Heather Wagonhall, Carter? I don't know her personally, but but I know of her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had dinner with her the other night and Good. she invited me to be on her show. But while we're here together, um, we're going to do a Fox Nation uh, uh, segment. So anyway, so I'll, I'll certainly let everybody know and hopefully we can get that link over to Gary and he can put it up maybe the next show or the show following and we'll, you know, we'll get folks tuned into the Fox Nation segment. So in, in fact, Carter, what I plan to talk about there is, you know, obviously very generally offshore investing, blah, blah, blah. But as you mentioned, the Consumer Resource Guide, such an important document for anyone looking to take their money offshore. And, and you know, I'm a huge advocate of that. I think people should, thank you, Carter. Yeah. I think people should have 10, 15, 20, 25 percent of their money in offshore uh, assets, offshore investments. And, 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 and why not? I mean, people think it's scary, but like, why would you have all your eggs in the U.S. basket? Right. Yep. And then, and, and, and the thing people say is, well, I have BMW and Nestle and Toyota stock. Yeah. But where do you own it? You own it on the New York stock exchange. So effectively you don't have true international diversification, right? You, everything you have is a U.S. Right. based asset. And, and so, you know, I'm a big advocate. Look, even if it's 10%, take 10% of your assets and put it into a true diversified overseas international investment. And, and, and I think that's very, very important. It's just one more basket for your eggs, right? But, but, but before you do it, you absolutely have to have a copy of the Consumer Resource Guide. You can do proper due diligence. Um, and uh, I think that's what we're going to talk about today, right? We're going to talk about a couple of the questions. Absolutely. We're gonna, we, the, you, you have in, in that guide. And folks, please grab this guide. When I tell you it's the Offshore Everything book, I really mean it. Check out the grab it and it's free. It's free. You can download it free. Yep. Yep. And that table of contents, folks, it covers everything A to Z. And it, you mentioned investments. Mike, let me just read you one, two quick sentences from from the, the chapter. On, I think it's page 42. I'll tell you folks exactly because I've read the book over and over. <laughs> Here, what you just said, a smart investor is always on the lookout for the next big underserved market. As expats move south of the border in record numbers, you have a, you, folks, this for you, you have a unique chance to arrive ahead of the next big demographic wave. And Mike, that's where the smart money is, I, as we know absolutely. from you. Absolutely. Right. Well, Carter, a few weeks ago, we talked about that, that article you sent about the high net worth individuals going offshore, right, and why they're going offshore. Um, by the way, anything we talk about, you know this, but I just want to say this out loud. Anything we talk about, if you want to get a copy of it, it's easy. Offshore Club at ecidevelopment.com. Send us an email. We love to hear from you. Put in the subject line, high net worth individuals, consumer resource guide, Good, I don't, whatever. Just there's the, yeah, there it is. Thank you. All right. I mean, just send us a note and say, hey, that high net worth individual, high net worth individual thing, send it to me. No problem. We have it. We'd love to send it to you. But, you know, Carter, 
my, I don't know, goodness, this is going back 20, 30, 30 years now, right? In my college alumni magazine, back when I was in the computer business in Washington, D.C., uh, you know, I, I, now it's electronic, but I used to get a paper copy. And, and there was a quote by a guy, and I don't even remember who it is anymore, but I cut it out. Like I physically cut it out and I taped it to my wall back when I was in the computer business. And his quote, which is, is still one of my absolute favorites today, there is no competition outside the masses. Strive to be outside the competition. That is just like so spot on. You know, a good friend of mine, Steve Sugarroot. I'm many of you guys know Steve Sugarroot. I mean, his he says it a little different. He's like, you just got to look under different rocks. He uses, you know, he's from Florida. He's from uh, 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 anyway, North Florida, and he uh, he talks about uh, how people get out there in the mornings, you know, with their metal detectors and they're walking over the same beach that everyone else is walking over. He's like, what are you gonna find? Like 15 other people yeah. walked over top of that beach with their metal detector in the last 30 minutes, right? He says, you got to be looking at new sand or turning over new rocks. And so a couple of different ways to say it. But at the end of the day, Carter, doing something internationally, doing something that is an underserved market, as you read from page 42, finding that underserved market where people ha haven't really discovered it yet. And, 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 and look, it, when I was in the computer business, there was something called the bleeding edge and something called the leading edge, right? If you're on the right. bleeding edge, like you, you're bleeding. I mean, it's tough, right? Yeah. But if you're on the leading edge, what that means is you're moving into something that has become popular to a fair degree, but not wildly popular. But if you can anticipate the next step in a process of something that has become fairly popular and it's moving to wild popularity, I mean, so, I mean, I'll do this, right? I mean, your curve is kind of flat at the beginning. The bleeding edge is way out early adopters. You, everyone thinks you're crazy, right? There you go. Thank you, Carter. The Mike, I call it the Cobb curve. The Cobb, the Cobb curve. curve. I call it, and I call it this one particularly the popularity curve. But yeah, right, Carter. You know, yeah. so you know, it's it's a long flat line. Like I'm sure Venezuela is way the hell off to the left on that curve. You know, <laughs> it's you know, seriously Venezuela. Venezuela is going to be many years in the making. But I yeah. can tell you that, like, we're paying attention at a corporate level for for. Venezuela, right? At some point, it yes. will turn, and we're going to buy a piece of property for nothing, for nothing. nothing in Venezuela. Margarita Island, Margarita Island. There you I, go. They're giving the land away now. Yeah, it, exactly. It's still yeah. too early. It, it's still too early, right? But but right. when things shift, right, we will be on the bleeding edge in Venezuela, right? Because that's when you can buy five miles of beachfront property for a million bucks, right? That's the bleeding edge, right? And, and and if you're on the bleeding edge, like Nicaragua, we bought we bought three and a half miles of beach for two and a half million dollars in 2000, in the year 2000. And you know what, Carter? For the first five years, like people thought we were insane, and and then all of a sudden it moved into where it's starting to head up on that curve, right? It's starting to pick up, right? You know that parabolic curve. I mean, if, if all you algebra and calculus people out there, right? I mean, you, know, you start to get that real fast ramp up at some point. But it stays flat for a long, long, long time. And yeah. so, you know, if you can figure out, I think, look, if you're in business, like we're in the business of development. So for us to be on the bleeding edge and take risk, look, if we spend a million bucks in Venezuela, you know, three years from now and bought five miles of beach and the thing tanked, you know, whatever. I mean, it just didn't work out. It's not the end of the world. But for most investors, like you're not going to put a million dollars into something that's you know, you have to wait a long time. But for right. us, we just park it and we just let it sit there because that's a great investment for us. But but retail investors, right, who want to be on the leading edge, not the bleeding edge, but the leading edge, right, want to be want to be on where that popularity curve is starting to really ramp up. Yes. And, and and Belize, by the way, if you put that up there, put I don't know if you can Belize, yeah, Belize is almost dead spot in the middle of that popularity curve. You know, back. I mean, we, I mean, you know, our, my very first trip there was 1994. We started our mortgage company and then we you know, turned it into a bank. Right. So um, so we've been in the finance business in Belize. We're still there. Key International Bank. That's our bank in Belize. You know, we're still there. But, you know, in 96, we bought I bought my very first you know, re real estate asset. I bought a condo. Right. And and Belize was somewhere down in the not very popular. Most people didn't know it. If you were a serious diver or a serious fisherman, 
you knew about Belize. Yes. The second longest barrier reef in the world, great diving, great uh, fishing, but nobody really outside of those two very tight niche markets had ever heard of it. And then about 15 years ago, uh, the cruise ships started going to Belize. And I remember I was part of the Belize Hotel Association and there was this big outcry on the part of 90% of the hotel operator, owner, you know, representatives, like, oh, this is horrible cruise ships. They don't do anything for the economy. They drop off, you know, 3,000 people and they run around, they get back on the ship. Well, how does that help the hotel business? And I can still remember me and this woman, Julia, from, uh, from Sunbreeze, one of my competitors, but I love this lady. She is tremendous. She and I really turned the tide hard so that, the, so that there, was, there was no real opposition. Like, there, people were still not happy about it, but we, we stomped down the opposition because our point was, you know what? We're going to get 3,000 people per ship, and we're going to get two, three, four, five ships a day for the next forever, and those people are going to get off. They're going to spend their day, do some snorkeling, diving, go to the jungle, Mayan rooms, whatever they're going to do, and then they're going to go away, and some of those people are going to go, holy smokes, Belize, we got to go back there. That's well, it. When they come back, where are they staying? They're staying in a hotel, right? Yeah. Anyway, so we were able to really get the Belize Hotel Association to back off their opposition to the cruise ships. Well, now, 15 years later, they're giving away, they're giving away free weeks in Belize on Wheel of Fortune magazine or TV show, Wheel of Fortune TV show, right? TV so, show, yeah. TV show, right? I mean, like, so when they're giving away weeks on Wheel of Fortune, like you have hit mainstream popularity, right? That, I mean, that's about as mainstream as it gets. So, so the interesting thing is that while the consumer is a cruise ship consumer, Wheel of Fortune consumer, the amount of branded product in the marketplace is it hasn't caught up, right? So, for a retail investor to be out, you know, to invest outside the competition is to look at Belize and go, wait a minute, I could take. 10, 15% of my portfolio. I could buy a yes. branded product. I could buy a branded product that, that look, when somebody gets off a cruise ship and a couple of years later, they go back to Belize and they type up Belize, trust me, they don't know who Mike Cobb is. They're not staying at the Mike Cobb hotel if they have a choice. Right now, they don't have a whole lot of choice. So they're going to do some research. Who is this Mike Cobb? Look at all the reviews of the hotel. On the other hand, if they log in and they go, oh, there's a Marriott. Oh, there's a Best Western. Oh, there's another branded hotel. It takes the whole decision-making process to a very small level. Do I want to stay at the Marriott, the Hilton, or the Best Western, right? And different That's consumers it. will pick different, right? I mean, certain consumers want the higher end, and they're going to pick, you know, our Marriott product, right? Other people are looking for the $100, $150 a night, but they want they want a coffee maker in the room. They want hot water. They want, you know, they want a, 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 they want all the services, and and because it's branded, they know they're going to get it. And so all of a sudden, because there's a shortage in the market, there isn't enough branded product, right? This is an incredible opportunity for that mainstream investor who's saying, how do I get outside the competition? How do I find this hole in the marketplace? And, and you know, in the stock market, a hole in the marketplace is arbitrage. I mean, that's the technical that's word for it, right? That's the it. difference between what's known and not known. And I can remember there was this movie. In fact, you might have seen this movie, Carter, this movie where they the, they had a race to put the undersea cable from from like New York to London. And, and if they were going to do this, they would get like half a second faster than yeah. bouncing it up to the satellite and back down. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah it was by, the movie was by the same guy. The script was by the same guy who wrote the big short. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Yes. Yeah, yes. I read the book. It was yeah. incredible. And if you think, incredible. And you think about this. Milliseconds. Right. Milliseconds. They, right. They were going to spend, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to put this undersea cable from, from New York to London, a private cable, a private cable. It's not a public, yeah. private cable because yeah. they could save a half a second or whatever the heck it was, milliseconds, right? But in that half a second differential, they could make a trade in London or New York ahead of everyone else. And, and so that's arbitrage, right? I mean, it was technical arbitrage, but it was still arbitrage. Well, now you come to a country like Belize, English speaking, common law. All, I mean, it, it is the easiest first step for any Incredible. North American investor. All the contracts are in English. Better yet, all the contracts are legal in English. If you go right. to Mexico, they might give you an English contract, but it's not legal. The Spanish contract is the legal version. 
Do you read Spanish? Well, maybe you could hire a lawyer to read the Spanish for you. And no translation is ever perfect, right? So, so all of a sudden, it's an easy first step. And there's a shortage of product that the mainstream consumer wants, and the amount of mainstream consumers is skyrocketing. Southwest Airlines flies to Belize. Alaska Airlines, WestJet out of Canada. These are discount carriers, right? In the olden days, it was American and United. Well, it was Continental. It was, you know, it was American and Continental, and then it became United. Then right. Delta picked it up, right? But now all of a sudden you have, yeah, right, you have uh, uh, Southwest, you have Alaska, you have uh, WestJet out of Canada. So when you start to pick up those discount carriers and mainstream tourists, again, what an opportunity, Carter. This is truly the outside the masses opportunity in Belize right now to own a branded product. Uh, that's, by the way, that's what I'm going to be talking with with uh, Heather about when she interviews me on Fox Nation. Yeah, I, have to get, I have to get it down to six minutes. So uh, that was a lot. So I'm glad, I'm glad you let me ramble a little bit this morning, <laughs> Carter. It helps maybe frame my thinking for my six minute Fox nation session. Well, it, what, what you have just done is the exact reason we have here at the offshore club, the, the Mike cops offshore investment report, because essentially what I'm hearing from you is follow the big brands. Yes. When they make their move early, but here's something even better. Follow Mike Cobb because you got there before the big brands knowing that eventually they were coming. Yep. You figured it out. You know, I think uh, Drucker, Peter Drucker said, if you want to control the future, predict the future. Well, it's what you did. And you beautiful. just shared your thought process right there. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. 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 So now <laughs> we're finally, <laughs> now we're, <laughs> with, with time ticking down. Is it just me now? All right, it's just me. I guess we lost Carter. Hey, everybody. I don't know where Carter went, but uh, 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 you know, really, this is this is an incredible opportunity for folks to uh, take a look. You don't have to do anything, but take a look. Find find something that you want to look at. Belize is a great place. Belize is one of those places that is so easy as a first step for North Americans. So uh, take a look. Uh, reach out. Offshore Club. Carter, I don't know if they could hear me. I kept going. Didn't, were you, you were great. I, yeah, I I just heard what you were saying. It's perfect. So I got knocked off. I got knocked <laughs> I was, off. I wasn't, sure, I wasn't sure who was booted out of the program, you or me. So I figured I'd better just keep going. <laughs> you know, they, always, they always say in radio, I had a radio program for a couple of years, and they always say that, you know, dead air, no dead oh, air. No right? dead air. Yeah. No dead air ever. So uh, anyway, I don't know if it was me or you who was talking, but, but my point was, you know, hit us with offshore club at ecidevelopment.com. Just say Belize info or, or branded hotels in Belize. I don't care, whatever, just something like that. We'd love yeah. to send you the information about what's going on there so that you too can take a look. Look, nobody's asking for money. Nobody's, I mean, this is not a pitch, right? This is an opportunity no. for you to start doing your research. And you know what? If you said, I'm going to take the next six months, I'm going to come to Belize. I'm going to read all the stuff you got, Cobb. I'm going to read a bunch of stuff online. I'm going to come to Belize maybe twice, right? And 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 if everything checks out sometime next year, I'm going to make an investment in Belize. You know what? I'd say your timing is still really good, right? Yes. These big trends. Like, it's not like I hear all this crap. Oh, you better buy today. The deal's gone tomorrow. I mean, you know, hate to say it, but bullshit. Right? Can I say that on here? I don't know. I yeah, just did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have, we have total freedom. We have total freedom on our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. great. I mean, really bullshit. Right. And so when in these big trends, there's nothing that's today. I mean, there's kind of right now, meaning like the next six months to a year. I think Belize has six months to a year in this big arbitrage, right? And it's not like the arbitrage is going to go like this, boom. No, no, no. Yeah. The arbitrage goes like this, right? And, yeah. and you know, I mean, and so where do you want to be? Like, if you invested today, it'd be here. If you wait six months, it'll be here. If you wait a year, it'll be here. But you know what? That's still a lot. I mean, that's still a lot of room. But what I would say is, look, if, if you think doing something internationally if you think if you think taking 10 15 20 percent of your portfolio and diversifying it internationally is prudent another basket for your eggs if you think that's prudent and you think it's wise start your research now 
Hit us with some email. I'd like the consumer resource guide. I'd like some information on Belize. I'd like information on the branded hotel products, right? And, and you start to do your research over the next month or two and you buy a plane ticket. There's, there's a really simple piece of research. Buy a plane ticket to Belize for three, four, five days. Come down, put your own eyes, put your toes, we say toes in the sand, eyeballs in the palm trees, right? And that's all the sexy stuff, right? But, but walk around, see the tempo, feel the business environment yourself, right? And if you get done with that trip and you go, you know what? I, yeah, I think there's something going on here. And, and you will probably, um, most people do, because it, 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 people just can't even imagine how good it is, right? I mean, we're so locked into the fear nonsense that the mainstream media throws it as, oh, yeah, we got to yeah. stay in the U.S., it's safe here. I mean, really? Tell me it's safe here. Really? The markets are down, you know, and the shootings are going on. I mean, I don't know if it's safe or not, right? But, but the point is that, that, you know, I mean, get there and do your own due diligence. Judge it with your own brain and your own heart. And, what, and if you did that over the next two, three, four months, yes. I mean, yes. I mean, the window, the arbitrage windows closed a little bit. But, you know, there's still a lot there, right? If you wait a year, you're at here. If you wait two years, you're at here. So, you know, it's not today, but it is soon, right? Do your yeah. research, request the information, buy a plane ticket, come visit, and then, you know, reach out. If, 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 uh, if, if the products that we have, the Best Western, the Marriott, uh, Tiny Homes in Belize, if any of those – made sense for you. We'd love to serve you and help you get that diversification overseas. Um, yeah. And we never got to questions five or six today, Carter. We're not going to get to question five or six today, but I do want to mention this. <laughs> Folks, we will get to I promise next week, next week, questions uh, five and six. Care, careful what you promise, Carter. There might be something else very interesting we can talk about next week. <laughs> How's that for a teaser? Folks, I want you to also look beneath Belize there. Remember, I told you Mike Cobb is the investment canary in the mine. Yeah. Look at those countries beneath Belize, Nicaragua. He just started in Honduras at yep. the reefs, El Salvador yep. at, uh, at Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, Beach, El yep. Zante. Yeah. yeah. So, folks, those you're getting even earlier with a greater return. You get this home in Nicaragua. I can never help myself with this. I'm obsessed with this home, <laughs> folks. <laughs> that is just over 200,000 It on the beach in Nicaragua, Grand Pacifica in the U.S., that gorgeous, huge home. I think it's four bedrooms. That's two to four million in any comparable locale. Easy. Yeah, easy. How do you lose on that investment, Mike? What'd you say? How do you lose on that investment? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think you can. By the way, I mean, people, people, I, I see houses or how houses are built in the U.S., I mean, you know, it's it's they're not even two by fours anymore. They're, I don't no. know what they are. They're not even two by fours, right? When they frame stuff, right? These houses at Grand Pacifica and the homes and the homes and condos in Belize, by the way, are poured concrete. I mean, th they are they are this house, that house right there will be there 500 years from though. Those are real clay tile roofs, Carter. I mean, that wow. house is wow. solid concrete, man. It will be there 500 years from now. So I don't know how you lose on that, honestly. You can't. You can't. And the value is yeah. just going to keep skyrocketing. Okay, now now for the two questions. No, we're not going to do the two <laughs> questions. I, this has been great. This has it been has. the kind of investment advice that folks can't get anywhere else, the offshore investment advice. So, folks, get, the, get Mike's offshore investment guide, consumer resource guide. I call it the offshore everything book. Read it cover to cover, and next week we will cover five and six. Sound okay. good, Mike? <laughs> Sounds good, Carter. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> it's great seeing you again. Folks, it, was that incredible? Folks, this is the top offshore investor in the world. Just gave you priceless, priceless advice on making your offshore investment. So as I tell you every week, let's do this thing.